welcome to PCC Connection, a community affairs program brought to you from the campus of Pueblo Community College. So glad to have you with us today. And joining me in the studio, I, we have been laughing so much off camera, is the official mommy comic, Debbie Gutierrez. <laughs> welcome, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are here uh, in Pueblo for the Latino Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And uh, they are having their annual fundraiser. It's going to be a a great night of uh, dinner and dancing and drinks. drinking <laughs> uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun yeah but you are going to be one of the spotlighted people of course that's and, what they tell me uh, let's talk about the mommy comic uh, you've had this label for many many years yes and, many years it's uh, my gang name your gang, my name. gang name all right well tell me how the gang actually name. you know what it is my gang name because I used to work way back when when a lot of us were starting off Carlos Mencia and Jeff Gar Garcia Carlos Mencia yeah. Jeff Garcia uh, Willie Barcena, just all these guys that exploded, Johnny Sanchez, myself, and we would work these little Mexican bars. In and, the San Fernando yeah, Valley? Yeah, the San Fernando okay. Valley. And so one day I was, uh, it was my turn on stage, and this guy was being arrested for something in the audience. Big, big Mexican guy. And he goes, I love the mommy comic. <laughs> Let me see the mommy comic. That's so where then, the title so came from? So the boys started calling me the mommy comic, and then when I became incorporated, that became the corporation name, the Mommy Comic Inc. I like it. So that's my gang name. All right, I yeah. like it, I like I it. I know, so my gang sign, do your homework. <laughs> You, uh, it took you, uh, I got to mention this, it, it was a nine hour trip for you to get to Pueblo. Right, yeah. Weather in California, but you just came off of an incredible seven week run, and I want to make did. sure our viewers hear this. The name of your show is Love, Lust, and Lunacy. Yes. The Naked Truth About Relationships. Yes, yes. Now before I get to that, what I really want to make sure we understand is comedy turned into insight about relationships. Absolutely. And men and women and marriage and yeah. all of that. So. Yeah get to this at the end but tell me about that what's the origin okay. of your comedy my comedy as you said mommy comic um i started when alternative comedy was popular the janine garofalos and the ben stiller and it didn't seem to have a punchline. now i had always studied comedy as a craft where it was set a punch set a punch set a right. punch okay and so i took a class that taught me how to do that and you write about what you know so mine was set up punch set up punch about kids because i had babies in the house so that's what I would talk about. And so that was my shtick, as you have, or okay. your point of view. Sure. And the mommy comic was who I was. So then women would come out and see me in droves because I was talking diapers and carpool and what they did to me that day. Now, the children started to grow up and out. So I couldn't be talking about them. First of all, when they're teenagers, I never talked to them. Yeah. Talked <laughs> about them as teenagers because it was just okay. a privacy thing. So anyways, so they grow up and out, two of them. And I'm looking at this man across from me going, who? This man at the dinner table. Yeah. Okay. Vaguely familiar. Who are you? And realized, oh my gosh, I've been putting myself uh, in between him and the children, doing everything for the children. And I was frankly just worn out. And so I started to look at my marriage and wanted to rekindle that relationship. And we still had one at home and she was running me ragged. I'm like, of course, because he's the one that's supposed to be taking this on, not me. You know, and I really believe that dads are the backbone of a family. I believe that's how God designed him to be the leader of the family. And I wasn't okay. letting him lead. Let's talk about that. Yeah, ergo, I was exhausted and I okay. was tired all the time. Now, this is where the Love, Lust, and Lunacy show came from because that is the story about my husband and I. And um, it's a one-woman show. It's 90 minutes, has some drama in there because it talks about our marriage almost ending. It was a very serious thing. We were separated, and I realized our family was out of order. I was trying to do everything and not let him be the father. And men will gladly step aside and let you do everything. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, so, I don't know what no. you mean, but I, I'm going to take your word you know, on it. But yeah, but I it know what you mean. It was just one of the, it was, yeah. you know, and, and we got in this huge fight because I was doing everything. Yeah. I was doing homework. I was making sure the bills were paid. I was doing this. I was doing that. And he <laughs> said to me, if you don't like it, there's a door. And I said, I think I want the door. <laughs> <I'll take laughs> like, I, people on I the have other, a, yeah. I have a choice. I have okay. a choice. I yeah, didn't know yeah. that. People on the other side of the door, they do their own homework. They make yeah, their own lunch. Absolutely. You know? okay. They wipe their own behind. I don't have to take <laughs> care of people on the other side of the door. Okay. So anyways, um, so the show was a balance of comedy with this drama to let people know that a marriage can uh, come back together. You make amends, you accept blame, and you agree to give each other your best again. So it was about the rekindling of this marriage and 
that really came from a lot of my comedy, talking about how to add intimacy and sex back in your marriage and, and having dads take pride in what they do as a father and have fun. When you let dad be a dad, he makes it fun for the whole family. Everybody wins. Yeah. Watch okay. this. <laughs> Slam yeah. that door. <laughs> Guess what? It's in my hands. <laughs> okay. And he took the door right off the hinge. Slam that. Uh, yeah. In that vein, have you taken some flack? Uh, is, is this controversy at all to anyone? A man, which surprised me, a, a, a male journalist wrote me up in, the, in Wisconsin because I talk about the two things that every woman needs to do in her marriage. There's a list of a thousand things you have to do for everybody and you're worn out. But if you do these two things for your husband, he will help you. He will swim in, in shark infested waters to bring you a glass of lemonade just doing these two things. No, no. Can we... Say what those two One of them are? we can. Okay. <laughs> if he's hungry, you feed him. Simple. If he's feeling bow, chicka, bow, bow, I know what you got to do. No, what? Oh, no. Come. <laughs> <laughs> come to the show and find out. We talk about it. But yeah, this man wrote me saying that I set women back 100 years. Oh, wow. And uh, that I was a chauvinist and that I was sexist. And I thought, what? Women have, if you do those two things, you have all the power in this relationship. He has a bad day. Can you fix it? No. He opens up his pay envelope. That check isn't going to go far enough. Can you fix it? No. Some idiot rode him on the freeway all the way home. Can you fix any of that? No. Your man comes in tired, hopeless, frustrated. You are standing there naked with a cupcake. That's power. That's uh, power. I'm rarely speechless, but I, I think you... <laughs> that, and, uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Comedy for men and the women they love. See? I think this is really what this is about. Yeah, because okay. I, I, do, I do go in and I demystify who men are to women. The problem with relationships is women are trying to make men their friends. They weren't made to be your friends, you know? And we don't want to be your friends. You treat your friends differently, you know? You punch okay. your friends, you hit your friends, you take the friend to the emergency room. Say inappropriate room things. Yeah. Sure. When, when okay. men go to the emergency room with their friend, it's because they caused it. Okay. <laughs> you know? We're visiting with Debbie Gutierrez, who is commonly known as the Mommy Comic, who's here in Pueblo, will be performing for the Latino Chamber of Commerce. And uh, uh, I know there's been such a buzz about having you in town. Uh, Pueblo is a very neat, small, knit community. And so when, who's the Mommy Comic? And everybody's been out there on YouTube checking you out. And there's this incredible message. And, and I want to take it in a serious sure. uh, vein here for just a moment. But um, education. Your background in education, you were a teacher at one point at, uh, for 10 years. 10 years. Um, what's your take on education now in terms of uh, the message that you give to your children or to young people about education? That I as your mother and your father are a big part of it. And we go in there and we introduce ourselves to the teacher. And if you are a parent and you're complaining about education, I have a few questions for you. Do you know what your kid's textbook looks like? Because you should. You know, you should be able to identify their math book. You should be able to tell me what they're doing in history. You should be able to tell me who their homeroom teacher is. And I think that parents are just getting very lazy and they're not being an active part of their children's education. And you can't expect the teacher to do everything for you. Here, here. And so I, and, and you know what? Um, our junior high school principal said to a group of parents, mom's time for you to back off. Dad's time for you to come in for homework. And so I think that dads need to get more involved with homework. So really, um, I think an important part of the education belongs to parents who are sending their children off to school, whether it be private or public, okay. that they should be an absolute part. Otherwise, say nothing. Say nothing. Okay. okay. You're watching PCC Connection. We're visiting with Debbie Gutierrez, uh, the mommy comic. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. We've got a lot more to ask you. Hang on. We'll be right back.